Good afternoon. Um, before I even introduce myself, let me make sure we're all talking about the same thing. We're here to talk about standard share mutex. Um, it's basically a reader-writer lock. It provides exclusive access through lock and unlock, meaning one thread and only one thread can uh, own the lock and access what it protects. It also provides shared access. Um, a bunch of reader threads can come and get the shared lock and all read it at the same time. And when a writer comes in, they'll all, it'll wait for the readers to drain and then it'll get its exclusive access and do its work. Uh, it also su supplies some try methods, which we won't be talking about much today, or at all. So everyone here is here for the long haul now. It's only 20 minutes, so I guess it's not so bad. I said, hi, I'm Jeff. I'm from Bloomberg. I'm a team lead there. Uh, I work a lot with shared mutex and code that uses reader-writer locks. Um, I'm looking to optimize it to get better performance out of our code. Uh, I'm not overly interested at the moment in switching algorithms to lock free or anything like that, so we're going to stick to just shared mutex today. Um, and I have a recurring pattern in some of my code which I want to try to optimize, try to get you know, a little bit better performance on. So let me describe that scenario first. Uh, basically, these locks are held for very short time, periods of time, very short. Um, typically on the order of, say, let's, let's just say like a couple of hundred uh, integer math operations. Um, so nothing really time consuming. Most of the time, the work that comes in is read only. So 90, 95% of the work is just somebody coming in to read and access the data structure. Uh, when we do write, um, it's typically the writer will have to do some reading first, reach a point where it makes a decision, hey, do I want to write or not? and then write. Um, so to describe that a bit more pictorially, uh, I currently have code that looks like the left. I, it comes in, it locks the shared mutex. Uh, again, this, I'm sorry, this is the writer's side. The readers do the shared lock, of course. On the writer's side, it comes in, it locks. It does some read operations. It does an if condition, and it possibly writes, and then it unlocks. What I want to do, to, or want to investigate, is whether splitting that lock operation into two steps, into what's typically called the reserve and an upgrade, as depicted here, would improve my performance. Um, specifically, the overhead of the upgrade won't be charged to me if I don't go into the if statement. That's really not the big savings. The big savings is, um, well, the potentially big savings is not slowing down the readers or allowing the writer to continue while the readers are going. Uh, in other words, here, the writer comes in, he reserves, that stops other writers from getting uh, going past that point, they'll have to reserve the old block there. But readers can still be reading. Um, I then check the condition, if I need to, I upgrade. Um, that'll wait for all the readers to finish reading, and then I can do my work. Does that make sense so far? Very good. Please ask questions as I'm going through. I'm much more of an interactive person than a, just a speaker. OK. Um, so let's think about this shared mutex lock. What does it do for the writers? I, th I think, and I hope this is a comprehensive decomposition, um, is that there's really three steps it has to, has to do. It has to say, hey, I'm the only writer. No one else can be here except me on the right side. Um, I need to start preventing new readers from coming in. If I don't do that, new readers can come in, I'll never be able to get, obtain the lock. I'll be starved out. Uh, then I have to wait for all the shared owners, all the readers, to, to exit, to finish. And then, I, then I have the lock. Then I have my exclusive lock. Um, I want to introduce some notation for later so that I can name things appropriately. I want to introduce notation for, for the implementations as uh, reserve underscore upgrade. So a typical lock, which does everything where the reserve point was in that previous slide, does all three steps right there and does nothing on the upgrade. Does that make sense? OK. Now, looking at these three steps, it's clear where I want to do these in the reserve and the upgrade. Right? The first one I want to do where the reserve statement is, where I first want to acquire the lock. The wait is right before I'm done with the upgrade. I want to be inside the if statement and have that there. But this prevent new shared owners, it's not clear where that should be put. Um, typical implementations will put it with the first item. So I'll have reserve upgrade as being MP underscore W. The reserve is mark exclusively owned and prevent new shared owners. Typically, it's an atomic operation implementation. That'll just be easy to do in, when you're setting it. Or if it's something like what I'm doing, where I have a mutex, which is essentially the core of the lock, um, it's just the same mutex for both sides. You're done. Is that? Yeah, OK. Um, so that's notation for later. I'm going to be talking about five algorithms later, standard mutex, standard shared mutex, my own implementation of an MPW1 uh, algorithm, which has all three again at the reserve, and then the two different groupings I'm showing at the bottom, one where I do the uh, prevent new shared owners at the, at the reserve, and one where I do it at the upgrade. Ooh, OK. 
So having seen this decomposition, it seems like a pretty standard thing to do, right? It seems like something people have been talking about for a long time. Why is it not part of the standard? Um, if you look at the initial uh, paper submitted to, to the standards committee, uh, reserve and upgrade was part of that documentation, um, but it was removed. Um, and I wasn't sure why. And I was talked, so I went to the standards group meeting and I spoke to some people, and nobody there was really sure why either. Um, the general consensus was that it added a lot of complexity, but didn't really add any value. So how could it, that be the case? It looks so obvious to me, why, how could it not add value? So I started thinking about the problem as that's why I'm here. Um, and I guess the first question is, well, what would the methods that you would provide for this be? Would it be just reserve and upgrade, or would you expose all three logical steps independently? That would probably be too complex. Um, would you require a certain grouping to ensure that your performance is the same across implementations? Probably not. Um, are there any theoretical benefits of doing this? Well, yeah, the writer gets to continue while other guys are reading. Well, is that a big benefit? Well, if there's only two threads, yeah, it could be, right? It could double your performance, double amount of work you get done. When you have a large number of threads, it's still only one writer, so it's one versus n. And the theoretical benefit in that case is a lot lower. Unless, what if we don't prevent new readers Excuse me, what if, right, if we don't put new readers until we're in the if statement, what if we never stop those readers from coming in? Maybe we get more of a performance gain. That was sort of what prompted me to look at this. Um, and finally, e even if there are theoretical improvements or possible improvements, are there experimental verification of these improvements? And looking through the literature, I really didn't find too much to support the case for a reserve upgrade splitting. Um, my personal belief, though, is that that's based off of a bad starting point. Um, the current shared mutex is not optimized for where I want to be working. And as such, looking at it doesn't give you the data as to whether this reserve upgrade will give you performance boosts. Um, so let me go through and describe what uh, I decided to, to look at. Uh, I, of course, built my own micro benchmark. Um, basically, it simulates a bunch of threads coming to a queue as fast as possible. It takes a piece of work looks at the piece of work, says, is this a read or a write operation? Um, if it's a read, it just does the read. It does a busy wait for some amount of time. If it's a write, it does some busy work to simulate that read, and then it does an if statement on the work to say, do I actually write or not? Uh, and if it does, it goes in, it does another busy wait. Um, otherwise, it's done. Is that pretty straightforward? Um, I scaled the work to my typical workload that I'm interested in, which is, again, a very small hold time. Um, and the basic metric is I run this for a fixed amount of time and see how many of these jobs it completes. Um, I do that in a number of iterations. I take the 80th order statistic, 80th percentile order statistic. Um, that's the number I report for that trial. Uh, I want to display today as heat maps of representative results. And these are going to be a little hard to look at, uh, at least the numbers are. So I went ahead and I color coded it. You know, green is good, red is bad. Um, so we can decide whether this is improving or not over the current situation. Um, and why is this hard to just look at these numbers? These numbers I'm going to be showing are essentially percent, percent improvements, which should be pretty easy to understand, except I'm going to show one implementation versus a set of other implementations. In other words, if I have this toolbox of things, and I know, and I time and I do my work, I do my research, and I know which one I want to use, how much better is this new thing going to be for that particular task? Does that make sense? So I'm saying, does this extra tool really add anything across this range of scenarios? Um, so let's sort of try to drive, the, drive that at home and make this a bit more concrete. Let's look at shared mutex versus mutex um, for write-only workload. <coughs> it's kind of all red. That's what we expect, though, right? A mutex should be better than a shared mutex for write-only work. There should only, there's only one person asking. That's what a mutex does. Um, so this is confirmation of good. Um, moving along to all read, the opposite end. We see a lot of green, which again indicates what we expected. We expected the shared mutex text to be better when I have um, more threads all doing reads. But something's a little odd here. In my very, very small workload, it's a tenth the size of my typical workload, I see it's not outperforming mutex. Um, I say it's odd. It's actually not odd anymore, I think. I think it's pretty much common knowledge. Uh, for very, very short hold times, mutexes demonstrate themselves as being very good alternatives uh, to read or write locks. Um, that's again confirmed here. Let's move to something a bit more interesting where we're not always reading or writing. Let's have a mix. Let's do a 95% read. We would again expect shared mutex to outperform, but again, it's only in those, what, the typical workload and the larger workload. And we again see mutex really crushing it on the very, very short. 
And to move a step further down this hole, to 90% read, we see mutex kind of not bad everywhere. This is shared mutex versus mutex. So the red is bad for shared mutex. The green is where it's good. <coughs> Overall, it's not much of an improvement. I mean, if this was the only thing, we, the only workload we were considering, I would, I would even argue that shared mutex wouldn't be in the standard. It wouldn't have much of a usable workspace. Now, again, this is one micro benchmark. It's one very short hold time. Just, I'm not trying to really argue that. But I mean, from looking at this, this graph, that's what I would contend. So having seen this, I said, well, let's try to give a better implementation of shared mutex. So in my notation, this is an MTW, right? All three, all three of those steps are being done first, and nothing is being done at the upgrade. All three are reserved, done at the reserve point. Um, here I see a pretty cheery graph in my viewpoint. I see a lot of improvement over the better of standard mutex and standard shared mutex in each cell. So again, even when I have these small negatives, I'm comparing against you know, great improvement over mutex. Does that make sense how it gets against the set of items? So this to me looks like something that might be useful to include in our set of implementations. Maybe not in the standard, but as in, in your own personal toolbox. That didn't switch. There we go. Now increasing the read portion of the work, this should be better for this lock, and it is, and it shows again, significant improvement over both mutex and standard shared mutex. Um, okay, that's great. So I'm gonna now compare not against just standard mutex and standard shared mutex, but against all three of these algorithms to show if, I could, if another tool would actually have even more benefit to us. So let's start by doing the standard reserve upgrade where we, so we split uh, two and one. We both, we get mutual exclusion with all the writers. We mark it as no more readers coming in. And then at the upgrade point, we actually wait for the readers to exit. Um, this is actually the identical code, just split up into, into the methods differently. Um, so the only change here is, is how the threads um, interact with the lock. The, the writer is allowed to continue during that read portion. Um, here we see some decent improvement. Um, not great, though. Not compelling, I don't think. Not something worth perhaps inflicting on everybody. So let's look at, try to make it a little better. Let's look at more reads. Okay, still a bit of an improvement. Kind of meh, to be honest. Um, okay. Well, so far we've been looking at 100% actual rights, which I mean is that if statement, we were always going inside that if. Let's see if we can emphasize the benefit of doing this by making it a lower percentage. Let's only go inside that if half the time. Now I see pretty significant improvements. Now again, the amount of busy waiting done by all the implementations is the same. This is just a reduction in the overhead for the upgrade and where I'm waiting for the readers to, to finish. Um, so this is purely the algorithm. And so this shows a decent amount of improvement, but how often do we only write half the time? I don't know, is that a general purpose algorithm? I think you can see where the conclusion of this talk is going at this point. But um, let's go on. Uh, so let's try the other split. My thought being here that I have actually no overhead unless I go to write. In other words, I don't stop those readers at all. And I would hope that this would give me a lot of performance improvements when I'm mostly reading. And actually, again, comparing it to the, to the standard mutex, the shared mutex, and that, that new implementation, I don't see that at all. <laughs> I actually see pretty poor performance. Um, so you could say, well, maybe my algorithm's bad. That's true, you could say that. I spent a lot of time building this, but maybe there's something better out there. Um, in my belief, this is argument against this particular implementation. But let's go ahead and look a little deeper. Let's look at a higher write, read load, excuse me. And it looks even worse. The other algorithms you know, handle these scenarios just better. This is not worth in incorporating. Um, so let's go ahead and try so that I did something right. Let's look at reducing the amount of writes, the, the frequency we go into the if statement. Here we again see some improvement versus the other items, not really enough to write home about. And finally, just to prove I did something useful, let's go down to, let's say I only write 10% of the time. In other words, I do all this reading, one in 10 I'll actually have to do an update. Yeah, I see improvement, I see pretty good improvement. Um, so before I conclude, I just wanna say what happened to downgrade. I, I submitted this proposal, you know, thinking about the whole problem and, and downgrade was in there, and I didn't know which way it was gonna go. My hope was that it would be you know, this is gonna work out, show a lot of promise, and downgrade would be important. Uh, but let's just talk about it real quick. It's the inverse of upgrade, so however you structured the upgrade is what par portions of the three steps are in there it has to undo. I couldn't find very many real world uses patterns for it. Um, if you're putting this into standard, would you add it for completeness? Possibly. Uh, or would you leave it out to, to simplify the specification, which is what I would probably go with if it went that way. 
So my conclusion is that um, mutex and, and shared mutex sort of define or one dimension of a space. That space is a lot bigger, and we can have other implementations which provide a lot of benefit. Um, so possibly we should retune shared mutex as to what the most common usage is out there. Um, but I think people who are serious about using reader writer locks will have their own tool bag of implementations. Um, having said that, looking at any particular point, my expectation is, and my experience so far, has been that you don't get a lot of benefit for reserve upgrade when your hold times are relatively small. Only when they're ridiculously large, which I don't think is common anymore. Um, so I would definitely personally think reserve upgrade would not be part of the standard in the future, although I'm open to argument. Um, but I do think people will have their own set of implementations. So I thank you. And are there any questions? Yes, sir. So maybe the most, the most common usage is not the right approach. I just think it is. Maybe we need a set of different solutions for different conditions. Uh, completely agreed. I think if you're serious about using reader writer locks, you'll have probably a pretty large set of implementations. But the common user, someone who, you know, at, at the scale of the, of the library that is the standard, would not, I mean, how would you name those things? You know what I mean? How, how would you put it, it's just, it's just a, a physical impossibility to provide 10 of these in the standard. And how would I, as a part of the standard, differentiate between them? I can't say, well, if your workload is this, you know what I mean? Because the definition of workload, it would be very hard to put into the standard. That's exactly what I'm suggesting. Maybe we should think about. Oh. Say, how to how to write this in? Mm -hmm. uh, a set of uh, solutions for different conditions. I definitely think that would be incredible if we could do that. I think it would be very harsh, mm -hmm. <laughs> but I'm open to he hearing from you. Thank you. Anything else? Yes, sir. Just to note, uh, in our code base, we have a custom read write box. I'm sorry, a custom. Custom read write box mm -hmm. implementation, and it has two flavors: writer preference and reader preference. Mm -hmm. it, all, it also has <coughs> upgrade, but whoever designed the interface in the distant past didn't think of reserve, so it, it's basically an usable by itself. Ooh. <laughs> um. it, it, it's, it, it's an external reserve, basically. Anyway, um, just, just some information. And also, in our code base, base we use downgrade a lot. You, use, you do use downgrade? Yes. OK, but your upgrade, though, so Again, very time limited to talk. Not, not um, upgrade. Upgrade is almost never used. But we use but, downgrade. If, if I may, bear with me for a second. I see what you're saying. Um, didn't have a lot of time to go into this because of the time. But uh, there's different flavors of upgrade. Um, here I'm talking about a reserve where I do it. I, I reserve myself first. I'm the one possible guy who can say upgrade. Other implementations say, hey, any reader can come in and say, hey, I want to upgrade. Um, those implementations are very different. They have a very Imagine two readers come in at the same time and say, hey, I want to upgrade. How do you resolve that? Um, that's a very hard problem. It's not a common implementation. So is your downgrade, so once you're the writer, though, downgrading um, is always easy. Any, any writer can downgrade. The one writer can downgrade. Yes. Right. Um, that's always an easy operation, and it could have some value, I, I could see. Yeah. In, in our use case, we um, basically update some state and then downgrade, and some hooks which can then read the Have you benchmarked how much benefit you get from that? 